Marvel's back at the box office, and we're here for a second episode of Marvel Talks with Duck Talks. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Mitch. Joining me, I have my pals, Pirate Steven and Josh. Ahoy there. Hey, guys. Well, we have a uh, Marvel feature film back in theaters and available for streaming. Um, it's a it's a whole new era of Marvel. It feels like even though we're already been in the midst of Phase Four, but uh, it definitely feels like things have changed now that there's a a film in theaters. Black Widow premiered days ago, and over uh, Thursday. Uh, you know, they talk about movies, movies premiere on Friday, but you get that midnight Thursday showing that's now turned into like, what, 8 p.m. showings in some places. So it's kind of hard to pick out when a movie comes out anymore. But yeah, it's uh, it's great to have a movie out there and it's uh, it's great to have an opportunity to uh, jump behind the microphone and have something to talk about. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's going to be a good time tonight as we take a look at Black Widow. We're going to talk about the box office numbers. We've got a little bit of news. Uh, we're still trying to put together how the podcast is going to kind of flow. And I, I did want to point out here at the beginning that we're really thankful for everyone who has followed us over on Twitter and is already following the Marvel Talks uh, Twitter account. We have a lot of fun with Twitter with the main DuckTail or DuckTales, the main Duck Talks account. And I I suspect we're going to have a lot of fun over on Marvel Talks as well, and we're glad to have you along for the ride. Uh, if you haven't followed us yet, you should check it out. Been trying to retweet um, stuff. You know, we run a blog for DuckTales. We've ran a blog for a number of years now, and we were really good about covering the news and covering rumors and discussion and, and even covering some fan stuff going on with DuckTales. There's a lot smaller scale I've found. And as we've tried to ease into covering some Marvel stuff, information overload, guys, I'm constantly left with the thought, I don't have time to blog about this right now. Is it okay to blog about it later? Is it, This is actually a rumor. Nobody's confirmed this yet. So we're trying to get our, our feet planted on covering this. And I think... I think what we should do starting off is let's just stick to the news that is confirmed, like the actual news for right now. Uh, there's a few news items that we've come across today um, that we're going to take a look at. If it's rumor and it's something we're really excited about, I'm sure we'll end up talking about it and it'll make it into the podcast and stuff. But for now, we're going to try to stick to actual Marvel has confirmed. Kevin Feige has said things like that. That's what we're going to do. Um, so make sure you're following us on Twitter. Check out DuckTalks.com. We've uh, kind of partitioned the site to where you can get to Marvel Talk stuff if you're not interested in Disney Ducks, but we hope you become interested in Disney Ducks. We will still be doing the Duck Talks podcast, and uh, we've actually got something planned. Is it next week, Pirate? I believe it's on the uh, on the schedule. We've got a Duck Talks episode coming out, so no Marvel, Marvel, ah, tongue tie, no Marvel Talks next week. Uh, there will be duck talks. Uh, before we jump into the news, you guys want to talk about your experiences? I, I know both of you got to go to the movie theater this weekend. No. <laughs> I you did? I, I did go to the theater. Um, we were initially going to buy it on Disney+, Plus, and then my wife wanted to go out on a like a date night. So we, we date night to uh, Black Widow, and so it was the first time... I think the last movie we had gone to see because we we had um, a baby, so um, we we went and saw Endgame, and then we had a baby, and it was like, oh, we don't have time to go to theater right now. We gotta get babysitter, blah blah blah. And then COVID hit, and then so we're, we uh, we it's been a while for us, so it, it was nice to come go back to the theater and have that experience again. Um, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed just kind of seeing it on the big screen. I mean, yeah, I, I, I kind of wanted to dip my toe in the Premier Pass water and uh, see what that felt like. Uh, just because I saw that it's not going to be released for everybody on, on Disney Plus until October uh, 6th, which is 90 days from the Thursday night premiere of it. So uh, I felt like that was a long time and I, I probably wanted to see it more than once. Cause I feel like a lot of the, like the re more recent Marvel and star Wars movies, you want to 
you want it, you watch it for the first time and then you want to watch it a second time to answer questions and, and, and things like that. So, um, like I said, I ordered it on premiere pass is my first premiere pass experience. We turned all the lights off, made it really dark in the room and, and, uh, we were going to do popcorn and, and candy, but then I didn't want the kids to mess up my couch. So, um, yeah, five. So five people watched it as me, my wife, uh, and my three boys. So $30. Yeah, that's our that's six dollars a person. We got our money's worth there. So, and uh, we've already watched a couple of scenes more than once. So, um, yeah, I thought it was it was a good experience. Yeah, I've seen the movie a couple of times. I did premiere um, access as well. Uh, I I will say that after I watched the movie, I made the comment that I wish I could see it in theaters now, <laughs> because I think I would enjoy it even more in theaters uh, in a, in a theater setting. But the, it's so hard to go to the movies, and I'm pretty picky about... I mean, I, I go see... I've seen almost every Marvel movie in the theater. Um, but And this was one that I would have gone to the theater, but having the option to watch it at home... And for me, it wasn't so much about not wanting to get out yet or anything like that. Um, it had more to do with the fact that I could watch it right then. <laughs> because I got off work, and my wife was already off work for the day. She gets off earlier on Fridays. And I was like, are you ready to watch the movie? And she was like, yeah, let's watch it. So we sat down. We watched it at like 4.30. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great experience. I, uh, you know, we had our popcorn. The kids haven't seen it yet. Uh, the girls don't care for a lot of intense action. And this one might be borderline for them. Um, they will eventually watch it. But they didn't want to this weekend. So, so yeah, we'll... we'll with the premiere access, I'll get to watch it a few times, and I'm sure I'll be watching it with them sometime down the road. Yeah, I have to say it was it's nice to do a pause and then go to the bathroom, or or the little ones might need to go to the bathroom. You don't have to miss anything. Um, so that that's a plus from uh, the Disney Plus. Realize you have cheesecake in the refrigerator, and you got to get up and go get it. Yeah, right. I agree. <laughs> Josh, did you have cheesecake while you watched Black Widow? You know what. Well, I didn't have any cheesecake in the theaters, and I don't have cheesecake at home, so I would have missed out on both of those. He's like, man, I wish I could have a key lime pie right now. Yeah. Nothing goes with a Marvel movie quite like a pecan pie. I don't know what you got, what you guys' previous experiences have been like, but desserts and Avengers. Uh, Let's talk about these box office numbers, because I think this is the story of the moment, not just for Marvel movies, but for all movies. Um, because there's been a lot of fear over the last year and a half that the theater experience may be coming to an end. I don't know that the industry has felt that, but it's definitely been reported over and over again um, that it was in jeopardy. And we know there's been deals that have been made, and uh, there was you know, some spats that took place between various companies over you know, some announcements of, we're going to do this, and then theater chains going, oh, no, you're not. Um, so... It was interesting to see Disney, you know, over the last few months kind of say, we're going to do some dual models. Because Black Widow's over a year, um, the premiere is over a year of the original release, I believe. So it really was one of those things where they've been sitting on this film for over a year, like completed, done. That's just nuts to me to think that it sat that long. But so this movie premiered, it had a dual release, it was released in theaters. Uh, worldwide. I don't know exactly what all countries, but it had a huge release uh, internationally. Um, the let's see, the U.S. Open for the first night was 80 million, and then the um, the international was 60 million. So pretty strong showing. And I know for the total weekend, last I saw, it was up to 215 million. And that was reported by the Walt Disney Company, two hundred and fifteen million for the uh, weekend premiere. Uh, it surpassed that. Um, to kind of put that into perspective, I've never been a box office. Um, you know, I've I've never really followed box office numbers. Uh, anytime someone says, "Man, that movie did," you know, one hundred billion dollars at the box office, I was like, "Yeah, it was a good movie. I could see that. Hundred billion. That totally makes sense." Um, I don't have any concept of those numbers. They're just beyond me. 
so I wanted to take a look at it, and I put it in our notes here, just some ideas of uh, kind of what that looks like. So pre, um, some movies that are around the, well, when I did this, it was $150 million. It's over that now. Uh, but, but as far as the total opening being, what was it, 80 and 60? So yeah, about 150. So around that number, we have uh, Captain Marvel, which is another Marvel movie, uh, premiered uh, at 153 million. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, was 155 million. Um, the Hunger Games, uh, Catching Fire, I don't know which one that is. I wasn't really into those. I did watch them, but I don't know which one's which. 158 million. Um, Dark Knight, 158 million. So it's a really good showing considering, you know, um, the pandemic and COVID and everything going on. Uh, it's not bad numbers whatsoever. Now, it's obviously not in game numbers, right? So, in game did 357 million on opening. So, uh, and Infinity War at 257. So, you, you look at these numbers, I think, I think 215, I, I, I think they're going to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, the um, it, they had a two hundred million budget for this one, so they've they've surpassed that. So it's not a bomb. That's that's what you get out you get out of that one. Uh, other big movies this year: A Quiet Place Two, uh, domestically has made one hundred and fifty million. So I think Black Widow will easily pass that. Uh, the other big one, Fast, uh, Fast Saga um, F9, is, has made $141 million. Those movies do great worldwide, though. A Fast, uh, yeah. Fast and Furious 9 already has $542 million uh, worldwide. Godzilla vs. Kong had made $99 million, uh, which that also had HBO, HBO Max, but that was a free stream in for a month. Um and Cruella made 80.9. So Disney's two biggest ones this year, uh, Disney and Marvel's two biggest ones, Cruella and Black Widow, performed pretty well. Um, and I feel like Black Widow pro- will probably be have the best box office out of all of them um, for the summer. Yeah, it's 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 going to do well. It's it's uh, I've been impressed. When I first saw the numbers, I was blown away. I was yeah. not expecting that big of a jump at the box office. Yeah, I people are ready. People are ready a, to do anything. A few takeaways, though, too, from these numbers, because like uh, the, the for one, Disney Plus doesn't normally release any of the 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 amount they make on their premiere access. This is the first time that they've released that, and so either they're saying this is a really this is a really good amount, and they wanted to show that off, or maybe it has something to do with Marvel. But this is the first time that they've released these numbers, so sixty million is is pretty substantial. And the other thing, the other takeaway from that is that that generally when these movies are in theaters, they don't get the entire amount of money. So you see, like, oh, they they made two hundred fifteen. They they get like probably half of that from from the theaters taking their fees and whatnot. And then if you look at that sixty million, Disney get a pocket that whole whole sixty million. So that in turn almost is like a double for them because they're they're not having to split those fees. Yeah, and that was a mistake I made when I first read the, from this article. That sixty million that I said was international, that is actually the Disney Plus numbers, mm-hmm. uh, and that eighty million at the uh, at the box office that had to do with um, uh, just total bo- total domestic box office. So, but as of as of earlier today when it was reported on, surpassing two hundred fifteen. Uh, yeah, I think that's other- good news for the Disney company. I feel like people are going to see that success, and uh, Jungle Cruise will probably get a bump from that as well. People are going to um, – they now see that movies are alive and in the theaters, and people are going to them. So I feel like people are going to want to go see The Rock and Emily Blunt in Jungle Cruise. They're going to do continue to use Premiere Pass. Um, so just like the Avengers bump, you, when it, whenever the Avengers movies came out, everything got bumped. After it, I feel like the same effect will have it, but it'll be more, it'll be everything, it'll be all the Disney movies. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Jungle Cruise. I don't know if we're going to do like a uh, Duck Talks bonus cast on that one or what, but I'm pretty excited about that. That's one of those rides that I just love at the parks. You know, it's like the Tiki Room. If they made a Tiki Room movie, I'm all about that. <laughs> it could happen. There was a Tiki Room comic book. Well, I mean, there was a Country Bears. You you remember when I said if Disney really wanted to make movies, they should make a Country Bear movie, and you were like, "Yeah, they did that." <laughs> what they did to that? People forget Who about knew? it. Yeah, for I, good reason. I never knew it existed. 
<laughs> is it good? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it had so much potential. I mean, it's one of my favorite attractions at the Magic Kingdom. Still haven't seen the show. Next time you come down here, I'm dragging you over there. And we'll do it. We'll have no to do way. it. <laughs> I've wanted to catch the show, so we'll catch it sometime. All right, in the news. Um, I've got my notes over here, so I keep looking over there. I don't know that I like that. I'm trying to work something out here. Uh, podcasting. So we've got uh, cinemareviewed.com has reported an exclusive, and I just saw this, so I haven't got to fact check it at all. We might say this is rumor, but I don't know. Uh, David Harbour and Rachel Wise to return to the MCU in the future. Um, the blog says that they've both signed on for multiple films. Now, something kind of in the news right now that something going on out there is that Feige's saying no more, you know, huge 12 deal, 12 picture contracts. So, you know, this is probably just like a couple, you know, multi picture, two or more. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. I, I also, I hadn't heard this before I read this blog. But they mentioned that David Harbour has said um, that th there's more to the story of the Red Guardian fighting Captain America than what we find out in Black Widow. And he hopes it, that in future films he'll get to do that. And this blog seemed to indicate that the n information they were given was that that was the case. Yeah, Which, of course he would want, more, want to do more Marvel movies and get that money. Um, yeah. But yeah, I saw he he said he did an interview where he said that he could get his own solo film to see like a prequel of how uh, the Red Guardian uh, came into existence. And, and then the second idea was um, just to maybe um, try to track down Hawkeye um, and, and and try to figure out like a, a revenge story, kind of like we'll talk about at the end, end credit scene. Yeah, or it could also be going up go after the new Captain America or the uh, with uh, Sam Wilson and and have a feature movie fighting against him because he wants to prove himself. It could be something like, like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, And uh, Mitch, you might want to do a disclaimer that this is, uh, if you haven't seen the movie, this is spoiler. <laughs> You're exactly right. We did not even cover spoilers. So um, spoilers, spoiler alert, we're going to be talking about things from the movie. <laughs> uh, we'll try to be careful to do that. In, it, before we get started moving forward w you know watching black widow and hearing his story i knew the timeline wasn't going to work out for captain america but we know the u.s had other captain americas that they tried to use so i wondered if maybe during the cold war there was a captain america in russia that nobody in the u.s knew about i mean some other type of super soldier. Maybe it wasn't even a super soldier. Who knows? So maybe that kind of story can be out there too. Um, there's a lot of people talking about it online. I found that interesting. I mean, they stopped doing the one shots. I would, that whole sequence would have been a perfect Marvel one shot for the DVD Blu-ray release uh, of just him retelling the story and, in the, and you see how it plays out in his head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that he's totally winning and stuff. So, um, yeah, I would like to see that. Now, would you like to see the red guardian get his own movie though? No, I, I, I don't feel that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I do think we'll get more black widow films. I think that definitely could be it. Um, I'd like to see that happen. All right. Also in the news, uh, Kevin Feige did an interview with Rotten Tomatoes, and in this interview, they asked him, when will we see Agatha next? Uh, and this is Agatha Harkness, is that it, uh, from WandaVision. Uh, the interview was going all over things about Phase 4, and so they were talking about how well um, WandaVision did and how well it was received and how that character was well received. And so they asked, when will we see Agatha next? And his response response was someday someday soon you'll see Catherine Hahn in Knives Out 2 next then maybe an assortment of other things but within the MCU it can't come soon enough let's put it that way 
Uh, a lot of speculation going on about when this might take place. Of course, the character kind of fits into uh, the next Doctor Strange film. Uh, I think that would make sense, especially if it's soon. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, and Marvel, I mean, they're taking, they have so many different avenues with Disney Plus that they can take. An A- Agatha Harkness Halloween special or something would be fun to watch mm-hmm. on Disney Plus. <laughs> I'd, I'd watch her own movie. She, I think she's Catherine Hahn just nailed it. Um, but who knows? She can pop up at really anywhere. I wanted to pop up and go, what's up, witches? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the news that I have in the notes uh, for this week. We will continue to pick up items as we do Marvel Talks episodes. And if there's a rumor that you'd like for us to talk about or some news you'd like for us to talk about, uh, make sure you send us an email. Uh, that's ducktalkspod at gmail.com. Or, you know, shoot us something over on Twitter or join our Discord. There'll be links for all this in the show notes. Uh, but, yeah, one other thing I wanted to do before we got too far into the episode, because when I did our no prize trivia, nobody took me up on the offer. But that's okay. I didn't push it because we're not covering Iron Man this week. We're going to cover it on our next episode. And it was really an Iron Man question. So I'm going to throw it out there again. If you want to mention on the podcast, uh, and I don't answer it, obviously, because we'll have to edit it out. But I, I'm going to ask the question again. I'd like to know if you guys know the answer. Because I'll be honest, I had to dig through some stuff to get the get the answer. It was something I came across on an interview. Um but other than Terrence Howard, so, okay, I'm going to rephrase it. I'm going to give you a hint. There were two people considered for Rhodey in Iron Man, in two, the 2008 Iron Man. One of them, obviously, Terrence Howard. He got the part. There was another actor who was considered for the part. Who was that actor? That's the trivia question. Do you guys, do you guys know? Like, not a guess. Do you know? I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. I like it. Um, I don't know, but I have a guess. (laughs) Okay. But I'll I'll keep my guess. You keep your guess. I thought it was really, really interesting when I heard it, and it made me wonder how things would have been different. Um, So, yeah, we'll talk about that in our Iron Man episode. Uh, And, uh, yeah, I, I like Terrence Howard in the role. We'll talk about that more then. Let's talk about Black Widow. We've already talked about our experience seeing the movie, but now we're just going to kind of... This is just a reaction episode. I don't know that it'll follow the exact same format as our future episodes where we dive in, um, but uh, let's uh, let's take a look. Pirate, you want to kick us off with maybe some information about where the character comes from? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do want to bring those notes Your notes up. closed on you? <laughs> yeah, they're on my so, phone. So... While, while you're bringing that up, it's not a character. I've already talked about it with the Avengers. It's not a character that I knew a lot about other than all of her appearances when she'd show up in the comics that I did read. I mean, I knew she started off as an Iron Man villain, or at least that's what I think she started off as. Yeah, uh, so she was created by, created by editor and plotter Stan Lee, scripted by Don Rico and artist Don Heck. And debuted in Tales of Suspense number fifty-two, where that she sounds like an Iron Man comic. Yeah, it was an Iron Man one. So, and that was in April nineteen sixty-four. And uh, she was a Russian, like just like this one, Russian spy and antagonist of Iron Man. And uh, later on, she would defect to the United States and become an agent of Shield, and eventually a member of superhero team Avengers. So it's kind of like going the. Um, MCU is pretty much telling it um, sort of in that same same line. Yeah. I like in yeah I she like had a totally movie. different look when she was first introduced before she got her, her black suit and her the red hair. She had more of like a uh, an actual costume. In yeah, the, like a femme fatale. Completely a mask. Yeah. Yeah. The um, I, I like where the Marvel Studios has gone with the character. Uh, you know, when she was first introduced back in Iron Man Two, um, I mean, for those of us who grew up reading comics, I mean, you knew who she was as soon as you heard the name. It was like Natalie or Natalia. I think they used Natalie, and it was like, oh yeah, red hair, Natalie. And 
I'm pretty sure we already knew that she was cast as Black Widow. I don't think that was a secret. Was it? It's hard to remember back then. Yeah, and she so was one of the highlights of, of that film, too. Yes, for sure. That scene with her and Happy Hogan, like when she's first introduced, and Tony's like, can you give her some lessons? And he's trying to get her attention, and he, he gets a little too close, and she just takes him to the floor. It was great. Yeah. So uh, Iron Man 2 was in 2010, and it took uh, – this movie was originally a 2020 movie, so it took 10 years for her to get her own solo f- flick from that. But the this latest Black Widow movie was her eighth appearance in uh, in different Marvel movies. So she's definitely a popular character that they like to include in a lot of different um, – avenues and my favorite uh captain america winter soldier was my favorite look of hers with that with her short red hair um and what and, and her personality in that particular film i know you guys would probably agree because y'all love that movie as well yeah, I can, oh yeah I, I can see that yeah that that's my favorite I don't know that I can say it's my favorite over this movie yet, but that has been my favorite um, dive into her character because I feel like she had a lot of growth in that film. Um, It's one of the main parts of the film is her growth from uh, being this spy who's kind of compartmentalized her life and doesn't have any friends to there at the end, you know, before they go into battle, you know, asking Steve if he would trust her uh, with his life. And, you know, he, he says, I would now, you know, I, Probably wouldn't have yesterday, but I will now. And I, I think that's a lot of growth for the character. And I think throughout the last, you know, 10, 11 years, the character's seen a really wild ride to go from being, you know, that character that was first introduced as a double agent in Iron Man 2 to, you know, starting to to realize she can live for maybe, I mean, I, I see in The Winter Soldier, I think she kind of gets to the point where she realizes I no longer have to live for the mission i can kind of live for a cause and i think she gets behind that and by the time we get into age of ultron she's starting to live a life you know she's even got that whole ruffalo uh i guess we call him banner she got that whole banner (laughs) um relationship going on that just seemed weird i'm sure we'll talk about that more when we get there but um yeah we learned a lot more about her past in that movie and then in civil war she has all that taken away from her and she's back on her own, and that's where we find her in this film. I thought the progression is just phenomenal, especially when you consider her ending, um, when you get to uh, to Endgame. Yeah, a- Age of Ultron, a lot, I know a lot of people, that's not their favorite Avenger movie or Marvel fo- uh, movie, but I really liked it when it first came out. And I like that it's kind of like the middle of the road of this whole Inf- Infinity Saga. And I like when movies call back to that one and you see how important that movie was because you see a lot of the um her it when um scarlet witch puts her into that trance you you get all these flashback scenes of kind of like the red room and her training to um to become the a black widow and her uh, hysterectomy and all that it's it seeing that makes me like black widow more and age of ultron more that um that it's all connected like that Yeah, they just keep building. And that's one of the things we love about the Marvel Universe. And it's why we feel like we could talk enough to have a podcast about it. Because it's just all the interconnectivity um, just really makes for a great experience. And I feel like this movie continues that legacy of building on what has been and building towards something new as we get with the end credit scene and uh, a few other things that take place in this film. And, and with the news that we got today of um, you know actors from this movie now being signed on for... For more movies in the future so we're going to get much more of these characters i like the way the film started um you know it's not an origin film but yet we get her origin i mean we we kind of already knew the basics of black widow's origin but with this film uh we got a little more detail and even to see that she got a three-year break from the red room right to be able to move to ohio and to live as a family um with these um uh, you know her, her comrades and to uh, have an opportunity to just grow up as a child for those three years and then to have to go back is kind of devastating and even to see her her mother Milena, is it Milena? I think it's Milena. I have to look 
um, to even see, you know, she's she's saying, I don't I don't want to go back. Um, it really makes it an emotional story. You you kind of get connected to to that. And hey, how about that Ducktales cameo? That was huge. <laughs> yeah, when we saw that, I, we me and my wife just looked at each other and we're like, what? <laughs> Yeah, and that was you know that's kind of planted in there. Uh, so so it starts off Ohio, nineteen ninety five, and I mean the first thing I wanted to do when I saw that um, when I was at home on my premiere pass, I wouldn't be like pulling up my Pause. phone to look it up. But um, in nineteen ninety five, the Disney afternoon look because it, it was in the afternoon when when the scene was being shot, and and um, the Disney afternoon was composed of Goof Troop, Bonkers, Aladdin gargoyles and timon and pumbaa so it's probably that time of day is probably gargoyles time so yeah it was um, later if it was afternoon yeah it was they went with ducktales which for more symbolism that it was a they were watching fun family adventures and later on in the movie they go on a, a family adventure like that so i sure that's that was, the scene where he says remember the fun the adventure we were going to go on yeah, remember, remember the adventure, um, and um, and it, it was it's the Ducktales intro theme that they that the, is on there. So I in my head they weren't watching the Disney Afternoon since it was 1995. They were watching as VHSs that were so popular that had all the episodes on them, um, or not all of them, but like the collection of them, yeah. three or four episodes. So and then we later see it again when they show in the in the credits when they're showing all, all the different. Um, the Black Widow uh, children are, are getting like indoctrinated into the um, the cult, um, and they're showing them Ducktales. So I think it's like funny. It's like, hey, Ducktales, this is this is what you uh, <laughs> you need to be watching. Well, a fun fact about Ducktales is that it was the first animated series to air in Russia after the Cold War. So during the Cold War, there was nothing from the West from the West coming into Russia. It was the first thing to air, first animated show to air in Russia after the Cold War. So I thought that was also a nice little nod there. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting that part of their training or manipulation included DuckTales. Who knows what's in us, guys? There's no <laughs> telling what's what's there. And that we've been feeding our kids. We should be concerned. <laughs> Were you guys surprised by the beginning where it picked up? I felt like it wasn't like a normal Marvel movie, right? Yeah, I was a little surprised. Oh, I think Steve's muted. Oh, you're you're muted. It was kind of Star Lordish. I kind of got some Guardians of the Galaxy vibes of going back in time and starting with a kid. You're still muted. Oh no, we've <laughs> lost audio. Well, I'll talk while he's getting it fixed. Yeah, uh, yeah I was surprised that it, it showed the, them as a little, like, as younger kids and living in Ohio. Because um, I, I wasn't sure where they were going to start off. If it, uh, Like, I knew it was supposed to be after Civil War time, but I didn't know if they're, I didn't realize they were just going to do the, the little bit of an origin story for her. And But it, it does make sense because, I mean, it does introduce the sister uh, um, yeah, a, a little bit and where she's coming from and that connection and I, and I believe that that was the, the smart move about it because if they would have just had the sister show up we'd be like where, where was she all this time or why why didn't she ever talk about this um, and, and it makes sense so it, it it was a good move for for, for that and um, it would just it just threw me off a little bit because they were like a normal family and I was like okay that's, this is something's not right because I know yeah, they're supposed to be in Russia. And they're supposed to be going through the red room. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? And I kind of got to that point where I explained it. Yeah, you're still muted. Yeah, I I immediately thought that um, they were definitely like undercover, and in the, probably well, I mean, we knew they were in Ohio, so I knew I I picked up on that. I was I was I thought that was really cool, and I like that we got to see them together because we knew from the trailers that she was going to call, um, she was going to call her her sister. You know, she was going to call, uh, mm -hmm. Yelena, Yelena, her sister. So I like that they went ahead and, and built on that. And, um, and that we got to meet the whole family. Yeah. And even though it was quick, they didn't, you know, you could tell there was, 
they cared about one another, but you didn't get too much because yeah. I feel like if we'd gotten too much of the family, then th- the later parts of the movie would have felt a little more odd. But they worked. It all worked. I feel I, I don't know if they did this, but like um, the Alexi, the the father, it seemed like he looked younger. And I don't know if they did the DH thing or if it just made him yeah. let, let, with less weight because I know he he's lost weight after the movie so i don't know if it was just the lost weight that way or if they made him look younger but um he did, he, he did stranger things he is in stranger things in hellboy yeah oh was, was he the most recent hellboy yeah so i i was asking the same question josh was asking of did he get de-aged because usually when i see him he looks like he's been like drug in a mud by a truck or something <laughs> um so and, and rachel weiss as well could have been de-aged because this I, is several uh, years i didn't notice yeah. her as as much because she she still looks the same as when she was in mummy so <laughs> that's that's the first movie i think of too <laughs> pirate do you do you remember what you're going to say before it uh oh, i was gonna say i just did not, i did not like the nirvana cover of um <laughs> of that it was it smells like teen spirit it was it's horrible it was odd. It was very odd. Yeah, it sounded like they were kind of going for like a Guardians of the Galaxy scene of, of playing the song from the early 90s. And it, it was, it's played a real thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a weird, it was a weird selection to not play the re, the real thing. I don't know if maybe there was some sort of sound they were going for. Um, but yeah, it did feel odd. It, the whole scene of their escape was uh, was really great. I, I enjoyed that, and then we finally got to see um, Alexi's strength as he as he just kind of pushed that out of the way. I wasn't sure going into that whether he had the powers yet of the Red Guardian, and then of course when they land in uh, Cuba, we learn that he's he's got this history and he's ready to get back out there. And um, it, it the movie felt like a spy thriller to me so you know how i am that's one of the reasons why i love the winter soldier and with this movie it definitely struck those chords for me and got me excited it almost felt like a bond movie which is funny i mean they they nod to that because they show uh moonraker in the movie natasha's watching it when she's in her um in her getaway um the trailer out in in the middle of nowhere uh, when the generator goes out, <laughs> but uh, and then also, I mean, that movie has some great scenes, like with the uh, the skydiving, and then you've got kind of a, a monster, uh, tough villain, and uh, so this movie kind of kind of plays homage to some of that, and that was really cool. I enjoyed that. One thing I got wrong, I think the last time we were talking about this, I, I don't know how I had this wrong in my head. I thought this movie was going to take place between Infinity War and Endgame. And it wasn't until the day of its release when I, I made a tweet and one of our friends, Eric, called me out on it. He was like, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's known that it's between Civil War and Infinity War. And I was like, you're totally right. I had this wrong in my head. Um, so I was really excited when I realized because – um, I was I was afraid it was going to mess some things up between Infinity War and Endgame, and I'm sure Marvel wouldn't mess things up. But you know, in my in my fan head, I I thought I knew better. Uh, but I thought the placement was great because she's on the run. We see Thunderbolt Ross uh, again, and which is funny if he's Secretary of State that he's actually chasing mm-hmm. after the Black Widow. Uh, but it was so important that he put it on his uh, docket for the day to. <laughs> To, uh, to search for her, and uh, it was great to see him, because I think Thunderbolts are coming. Mm-hmm. You know, We talked last time about uh, New Avengers coming. I, I, there's no way Thunderbolts aren't coming. We've got Abomination in trailers. Um, we have uh, U.S. Agent and other things that we'll talk about in this episode where uh, Val shows up, and we find out that uh, Yelena's working for her as well, and whoever... Uh, is supporting this, whether it is Ross, who's actually in charge, or Zemo. I mean, it could be it could be Baron Zemo uh, doing this. Uh, I'm I'm here for it, but I think it's got to be named Thunderbolt because if they call him the Thunderbolts, they've got to do it because of the connection with Ross. So I think Ross has got to be behind it 
And Zemo just takes over later because we know he's going to. Well, I want him to. I want him to become Red Hulk and and take over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we see him you know, like he's got a cane in this, um, and like so he's 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 pre- having some wear and tear. But I I think if you uh, in the in in the Avengers one where we see him last. Um, <laughs> He said that uh, they had like, oh, Ross, you look terrible. He's like, oh, I had a heart attack so so many years ago, and I think this is just around when that happened. So he's like walking. Yeah, that around was King. Civil War. Yeah, that was okay. Civil War when he's talking with them about life, you know, having life in perspective. Yeah. And he uses yeah. that that story. He does show up again in Endgame uh, yeah. as a hologram. Um, and I can't remember if he's in Infinity War or not, but he is in Endgame. Or no, wait, I'm totally wrong. It's Infinity War, not Endgame. Yeah, I'm looking forward to rewatching these films again yeah. now that we have this movie. Um, it, it got me wanting to watch. Um, have yeah, you guys been watching I, the Marvel Legends, Marvel Studio Legends on Disney Plus? It's pretty good. I know. But I did. I, I knew this was going to be between Civil War and um, Infinity War, so that made me want to go back and watch Civil War. And uh, I noted that the last scene that we see Natasha in. Uh, is in it was Captain America Civil War is when she's talking with Tony at the hospital after she had just let uh, Steve Rogers escape and Rhodey got um, paralyzed uh, in that bad injury and and uh, that's when Tony tells her that uh, Chikala told Ross what you did so they're coming for you so after she says that after he says that uh, she says I'm not the one who needs to watch their back and she she runs off and that is when kind of that that's when she goes off and then the, our this movie begins really yeah yeah and it kind of makes me want to like because normally when i watch all these movies i watch them in like the release order this is the one film that i'm i'm considering of watching it in the future where i'm watching it after civil war instead of released or order just because of how it fits in the timeline so well um yeah. and i mean the only thing is the end credits that that is a lot of place so like everything else seems like it, it it needs to be watched in that order. Yeah, it it fits. It, you would I feel like you would have to watch this movie in in that place. Mm-hmm. I think it would make it more meaningful. Yeah, um, for sure. Because when we watch it, we're well, and when you rewatch it, you're going to have the same thing. But for someone new coming into it, I almost feel like it would need to be in the story order for this mm-hmm. film. Um. But for those of us rewatching, hey, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do when I get there, because I do watch. It's funny. I watch the Star Wars movies in in you know chronologically, yeah. but I would I watch the Marvel movies based on release. But I wouldn't. I like like for instance, um, Captain Marvel is set in the nineties. I I wouldn't watch that one before all the other stuff. I would still watch it in the same order. But this one, since of how it fits, I feel like it almost needs to be. Yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good prequel. I I liked it. I really like you know I wasn't sure how I would like them going backwards in the timeline, um, again. But I I felt like this worked really well, um, and I like that we did finally get a Black Widow film because I think it was much deserving. And there's a lot to be said about the behind the scenes, some of the information that's come out over the years of what held this movie up and um, movies like it. And I'm glad Marvel's to a place where um, they're willing to to take those chances that they weren't allowed to take or weren't willing to take before, and I think it's already paid off in a big way. I mean, with with Wandavision and then this movie, um, I think they've made big statements about what they can do, and uh, yeah. So she's on the run, and I had a question about that. If Black Widow, who I guess at this point she's not, Infinity War hasn't happened. So maybe not internationally, but if Black Widow was running around still with red hair and and not trying to disguise herself, I feel like she'd be seen pretty quick. I don't think she would get around the country, the world, you know, because she goes to Budapest or Budapest, um, which was a joke that totally went over my head. I didn't get it. Did you get like when um, what's what's the dude's name? This, this guy was oh. um, her friend. Well, he's not a friend. She pays him. Um, His name like, is I uh, he, Mason. Mason. Cool. I thought he was going to be a bigger player. He ended up being a fun character. I enjoyed mm-hmm. all of his scenes. Um, but when uh, when he um, 
man, I completely sidetracked myself. <laughs> But but when he says Budapest, your your mail came from Budapest, and she says Budapest, and he's like Budapest, I the joke completely missed me, and I had to I had to go back. I was watching um, another video on YouTube, and they were playing the clip of uh, Natasha and and Clint fighting in New York, and she says Budapest, and he says Budapest, so it's a callback to that. Totally didn't get it during the film. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't hit for me. Glad, I'm glad you got it now. <laughs> <laughs> but now I know. I could. I was like, why was that even a thing? Why was that going on? But uh, yeah, when she turns that corner in that in that vehicle and gets hit, um, I wasn't expecting the taskmaster to show up right away, which we had already seen. I guess we kind of skipped over some stuff with the whole setup of the plot. Um, with uh, Yelena and the the widows in this uh, antidote to uh, cancel out their programming, because that happens first. Um, and we see the Taskmaster for the first time. And if you listen to our first episode of Marvel Talks, I made the comment that I wasn't a huge fan of what we had seen so far of the Power Ranger look for the Taskmaster. I felt like the character had a very classic look, and I wasn't totally sold on how it looked in the movie but i'll tell you when this scene started um and even even in the earlier scene where we see it being programmed at that point i'm like is this an android what is happening um and then when that scene happens and they're on that bridge fighting i was like yeah i like this i like this a lot this it looks cool there's something going on that i can't figure out um you know it's either an android or um, there's some kind of programming going on here. I don't know what it is, but it's it's cool. Um, there's a lot of room for growth here, and but I like the look, and the look did work for me, and I didn't think it would. But that's about all that worked for me with Taskmaster, to be to be honest. Um, and I know I'm not alone by seeing a lot of the reaction online. So you guys knew we'd probably talk about this for a few minutes. Um, what do you guys think of the Taskmaster? Or did I just kind of throw you into it? You want me to jump into it first? I mean, I like his white caped look. Um, I, I love the Taskmaster villain from like the Spider-Man animated uh, cartoons. Um, I forgot what the Ultimate Webmasters, whatever the heck they called it. Even um, the PlayStation game. Yeah, and the PlayStation game. I, I, I like that uh, that look. I love that he mimicked everything that Spider-Man did. And this one, he, he mimicked uh, Black Panther... Uh, Captain America, uh, Black Widow, uh, Natasha, and um, and Hawkeye. So um, it was cool. It was cool whenever you saw um, Taskmaster do those poses. But I don't know. I I'm a villain. I'm a villain person, and I, I just felt like all the action was great. But I I don't know. I, I wasn't digging it. He was just a monster. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And, and Taskmaster could really just, um, it, it, I mean, it, it's, it's such a cool character how they can mimic you that I would feel like that could be a whole movie just with Taskmaster falling and, and being the main bad person or even multiple films. But, yeah, it, it wasn't doing it for me. They kind of left it open to where, like, she, they, the Taskmaster didn't really die. Um, but now no one's controlling her, and um, so I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll see more Taskmaster in the future. I don't know. And, and then uh, there there's a little bit of our I don't know how far ahead we're going on this or not, but a little oh, bit of just a just go for it. Okay, yeah. a, a red herring. I was of, planning on going for it. Okay, uh, uh, on Taskmaster, and where you're like, okay, they're gonna finally see who it is, and then it ends up being um, the daughter. Uh, what, I forget her name. Tonya. Did. Yeah, Tonya. And obviously that's it's a gender swap thing. And um, Just from a lot of the rumors, I thought it was going to be the mom was going to end up being Taskmaster. Because um, uh-huh. uh, she was rumored to be to be. Well, she behind. is a villain, though. She's the Iron yeah. Iron Maiden. Iron yes, Maiden. Yeah. yes. So, so, in the uh, comic, she's a villain. Yeah, I was just and a little. she's a villain in this movie, too, to some degree. Yeah. But she was in The Mummy, and we love The Mummy, so. Yeah, I just think it, it was just under. Slide. Yeah, it yeah. was just underwhelming. Um, yeah, it, it was, it, I mean, 
I, I, I was fine with the whole um, gender swap thing, but I, like I said, I it was underwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who are so, you? were you gonna say something, Josh? Oh no. Oh no. Okay. So I really, really enjoy this film. I feel like the Taskmaster is the weakest part of the film for me. Um, because as I said in our last podcast episode, I was really excited about this character being introduced. Um, it, Tony Masters is his name in the comics. Um, I've read comics with the character and I enjoyed the character and just his mercenary background. Um, he's like, a, um, I, I, I was looking forward to what they could do with the character. And I'm not saying they can't do it now, but I feel like with the changes they made, it works 100% for this movie. Like, for this movie, it was a great reveal. For this movie, um, it was a great way to connect to uh, Black Widow's history. Because we learn in Avengers from Loki that the red in her ledger includes... Vankoff, is that it? I, I should have. I should have these names somewhere. Uh, in, in it notes. includes his daughter. What's that? It's in the notes, but you probably won't be able to pronounce it. Oh, them. where is it? It's in there. I don't want to get it wrong. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. But Care. but it's yeah. They they mention his daughter, and to be honest, from that scene, I always thought Loki was saying she was his daughter, like you were born into this family of killers. That's how I took that from the Avengers movie because um, Black Widow has so many different origin stories from the comics. You you know, who knows what they're going to use? Um, that's how I took it until this movie. And then this movie gives us the backstory that when she leaves the Red Room or when she leaves um, Russia uh, and defects to the, to the West with Clint and S.H.I.E.L.D., um, she has to take him down and she ends up having to use his daughter and she and the daughter dies as collateral damage. So it's a you realize that the red in the ledger is really emotional. I mean, if you had to kill a kid in order to get out of that life, um, no wonder, right, that she was having such a hard time seeing herself as anything more than a monster. And I think that's really big part of this story is that uh, Black Widow had to be a monster in order to get out of this world. And now that little girl, instead of perishing, instead of dying, is now a, a monster at the hands of the very person mm-hmm. that her that Black Widow was trying to get away from. So for this story, it's great. I don't think it had to be the Taskmaster. But I think there's a really easy way to fix this. I mean, maybe create Antonia into a, her, her own character. Maybe that is a Taskmaster. But... They call it the Taskmaster Protocol, you know, from Star Wars. Anytime you build a great weapon, what do you do? You just go ahead and start building a second one so that you got another one, right? There could be multiple Taskmasters out there. There could be, you know, a, another one that is Tony Masters, um, who's now free, and maybe someone else is using him, or maybe he ends up free and becomes a mercenary. Maybe we get multiple taskmasters in the mcu i think they can make this work um and i think they can make it work with antonia i I don't think uh, it ruins it um that it's a different i feel like it's a different character not just like a gender swap i feel like the backstory is totally different um and i think that's what a lot of people are are unhappy with i i'm not going to say it ruined the movie for me or anything or you know i've seen some people you know that's not my taskmaster that's how they want to feel. That's fine. I, I think it worked for this movie. I think it was great. Um, it was a good reveal. But I do think it was the weakest part, but only because I had high hopes for this character I thought we were getting. And that's it. But I'll live with it. Like, I have everything else that I wasn't totally on board with the first time it happened in a Marvel movie, but now I love it, right? Well, I, I think if they do try and do something in the future with her, um, they can expand upon it and then kind of make that character better kind of like what they did with uh, with uh, zemo I, I feel like he was underused in civil war but, I don't know, that's just my opinion but i but i felt like absolutely when they when they brought him in for the falcon and the winter soldier that really he was able to shine there so i think maybe they can do the same thing um it, it, with her maybe not necessarily in a tv show or anything but maybe um, in the future because because the, the original taskmaster was was a villain and continued being a villain and and so 
one way they also got they could fix it because the, the original Taskmaster doesn't he 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 just has he can't remember things he's he's got some type of amnesia so if it's possible that if she loses her memory of the the past or whatnot she, she can become the like a weapon and a yeah. villain and and the main her the main thing that that Taskmaster does is like he's a mercenary he also trains some of the the biggest villains in, in the MCU and and they're like soldiers and so it, I think it could work in the future if they, they expand upon that. Yeah, I don't think he's ever really a hero, but he has been hired to train heroes. In yeah. The MCU. Uh, in, he, the, in the comics. In the comics, he do, doesn't he train U.S. Agent? Yeah, he did. And some of the other, so I could, there could be a Thunderbolts connection there in the future, yep. too. So there's, there's plenty well, of opportunity. Yeah, and, I just want her to uh, get a huge inheritance from um, her dad passing away and, and just living the good life now. <laughs> Take a break. I mean, she you deserves deserve it. it. I mean, deserve she it. spent all of her life as a puppet. I mean, that's yeah, that's horrible existence, which is you know the theme of this movie, that all of these women are being used by this man to do these things, and they have no control. Um, w- one thing you mentioned um, showing up in a, in a movie or a series one thing that I noticed is in the fight sequences, the heads up display, because um, we look through her um, her viewpoint a few times and we get the heads up and you can see it calculating things as far mm-hmm. as trying to determine. I don't know if it's like trying to determine how she's going to throw a punch or where the next um, it even does like a threat analysis uh, while on the screen. And we've seen that before in Civil War. Um, Iron Man has that when he's fighting Captain America and Winter Soldier in Civil War. So I was like, wait a minute, Armor Wars is coming. That's stolen Stark tech. So True. she may actually have a connection to that series that's coming to Disney+. Plus. True. Um, so we get, um, we, we kind of skipped over the family stuff that was where a lot of the comedy came from, right? Was from... Uh, Alexi and, and the and the family and uh, there was some good laughs in this movie. I really enjoyed the family dynamic and um, the whole scene because it's funny because they're at the table and he says we're going on this adventure. They take off, they get in the jet, they're split up, they live their lives separate. Um, they're all treated badly um, except for Melania, who is still a villain. <laughs> and then. Um, but she's redeemed in the end, right, for saving her family. But then when they come back together, they all sit down at a table again. And it's like they're right back where they were when they mm-hmm. separated. And then it's hilarious because they're arguing over, oh, these were the good times. And then, you know, Natasha's like, you know, this was all fake and it wasn't real. And and then um, Yelena's, you know, wait, that was my childhood. And you get some emotion there as well. And um, a lot of the funniest scenes are when they're all together. And then the heist, or not really a heist, but when they break. Lexi out of prison. Uh, that was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my favorite part. I love the, um, I love what they, they did it through an, one of his action heroes. Uh, the the head piece, uh, the earpiece popped out of the um, the head of the, the figure. I thought that was that was funny. And then the whole scene have to was pull great. the cord. Yeah, I, lo- I love the whole white jumpsuits that both of them um, switched into her and um, Yelena. Uh, I, I love. Uh, the Yelena character, I thought she was great. I like how she kept poking fun at uh, Natasha for her superhero poses, and, call, and kept calling her a poser. <laughs> and then she ended up doing a pose in the end. Uh, so that was that was that was pretty. Yeah, she, she, she's like, oh, <laughs> she was disgusted by it. It was great. Uh, and also the uh, the vest. I thought that was kind of fun. That the vest has more meaning because it was such a change for Natasha in infinity war and to uh, to see that there was a some meaning behind it was neat it almost feels like it was written into infinity war for this movie and you know who knows but because she kept talking about i love your vest and she's like oh yeah i love this vest and it's all these pockets and it's great <laughs> um so that was good uh the humor was good action was good it hit all the spy thriller stuff for me i love this movie i really enjoyed it. i've seen it twice now um and uh yeah i think i could watch it a few more times without being bored for sure it, it's a marvel film absolutely yeah 
What'd you guys think? So Marvel films have, okay, they're, everybody loves them, right? Except for those who don't, but everybody loves them. Um, but they have this reputation of having a strong opening and a strong middle and a weak ending. Um, things just kind of conveniently fall into place. Now, I, I'm not one to say that I agree with that with all of the films. There are some films that feel that way. But did you feel like this film did that or, or do you think it had a strong ending? I feel like a lot of people have been saying it's it felt like a long movie. So it was two hours and 14 minutes. So Marvel, I mean, Marvel movies are, are over two hours plus usually. So I don't think it was too long. It, it just felt like some, it, it was a very filled movie. It, it, they probably could have shortened a little bit of it. Um, but I liked that. I liked the ending. I thought it, it was a lot of action throughout the whole movie. And, I, and the way I like to think of it, too, is it, so would you guys see this movie if it wasn't a Marvel movie and it was just, um, hey, hey, check out this new Scarlett Johansson uh, movie. And you saw the trailers. Do you know how many Scarlett Johansson movies I've seen that aren't Marvel? I like One, it's Home Alone 3. Home Alone 3. I saw Home Alone 3. Oh, man. I feel sorry she's in you. Home Alone 3? Yeah. She is. She's I haven't seen it. I think that's her first film. Yeah, and and, and for me, I would I've seen seen this and seen that's funny. I would probably rent it, but not see it in the movie or, or when it first comes out. Yeah, I, so I I have a hard time answering that because I don't see a lot of movies in the theater, and typically it's it is Marvel, Star Wars, and Disney just because they they have my number. They they making the stuff that I enjoy, and then. Every now and then, my wife will have something that she wants to go see that that we'll go see as well. Um, even if they, I'm trying to think of the marketing and the way. I mean, it was marketed as a Marvel movie. I can't, I, I just, I can't picture it how it would be marketed as anything else. If it was just marketed as a spy thriller, let's just say it was like a new. <laughs> I about said Born Identity, but I've seen that discourse. Man, people are upset about that comparison. If it's just marketed as a new spy thriller, I probably would rent it. I don't know that I would have gone to the theater to check it out. I, I've i seen quite a few movies with Scarlett Johansson, but not because they were marketed with her. She just happened to be in them. There's only been one that I that was marketed about her. Um, and, it was a, and it was a movie that was, uh, it was called Lucy. It was kind of like a spy-y type of movie, kind of like... A, I think it was almost like a test Black Widow movie almost. And and it was good. And we saw it for like, uh, probably because it, we, we had known her from Black Widow. But other than that, I, I, I don't know if I would have seen it like, like oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm not drawn to go see him, like, I don't know. Not, not, not uh, like a, a, a person that's, I don't know how to really say it, but it's not, not necessarily type of movie that I would be drawn to see, but I w- would see movies with her in it with no, no, no problem. I, it's just... Um, yeah, Marvel Connections are really, everything for me. Yeah, the Marvel Connections really brought it out. Um, I don't know how best to say that, but... <laughs> well, right. and I, I just don't go to the theater a lot anymore. I mean, even pre-COVID, it's just hard to get to the theater with yeah. family and everything. Yeah, I think the movie hit everywhere it was supposed to as far as being a Black Widow-centric um, um solo film i think it did great job with that um i just thought i i don't i don't see multiple black widow movies especially since we know what happened in endgame um being produced besides this this single release i think yelena will be black widow yeah she that's where she went in the comics but i don't know if we're going to see a yelena black widow movie yeah. I think it'll be uh, you'll see it in other in other Disney Plus shows, which we'll we'll talk about in a second. But what do you, as far as the other successful thing besides the box office numbers, especially for Disney, is is merch. Do you see yourself buying any merch from this film? I don't buy merch from these films, any of them. And, and mean, you both and you both have and you both have little uh, little girls in your in your um, in your family. Do you think you'd buy them Black Widow or Taskmaster um, stuff? Yes. 
If they asked for it, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but if I brought it in on my own, they'd just be like, "What? Well, why did you get that? <laughs> no, um, you get but if it's, uh, you know, my oldest daughter has seen the trailers and said, after you watch that, let me know if you think I like it, because I think I want to see that. I think it'll be intense for her, and she's going to watch it uh, eventually, but I don't think it's going to be like, it's not going to be like Star Wars for her, because Star- she loves Star Wars, and we watch Star Wars together. Um, I, and she enjoys some of the Marvel movies, but I don't think this movie will get her that way. So merch wise, and I can't think of much merch at all that I bought for any of the Marvel movies, though, other than Disney Infinity. And I would say 100 percent if there if Disney Infinity existed in 6.0 or whatever we would be up to. Yes, I would buy merch for this movie if they had a playset or even just the figures, all, all of the figures. Yeah, I feel like the the delay in a year uh, also hurt this film as far because I know the merch came out in um, in March and April around and because they thought the May film was coming out, so a lot of that has pushed um, pushed the sales of that stuff back. I haven't seen a lot of merch. I saw a post from someone that I follow. Um, who got a uh, got a uh, box from Marvel with a bunch of merch from the movie, and there was some cool stuff in there. There was a Taskmaster mask. Uh, wow. There was like Black Widow gauntlets and maybe a Taskmaster shield. And then of course there were the uh, Marvel Legend figures, which look awesome. If I collected figures, absolutely, I think I would have these. You um, keep saying that. I feel like you, you need to jump in. Well, you know, if it so, here's my deal with that. You can't find them. Unless you go to the secondary market, and I'm just one, I don't have any place to put it. Two, I don't want to spend the money on it. And three, if you make it hard for me, I'm not getting in. <laughs> I would love to. I would. There have been figures that I've come close to buying, really close, um, but I've never been able to find them. Like I would have bought a Mandalorian figure if I could have found it in the wild, mm-hmm. but I was not going to pay, however much it was, secondary for it um you know the pop that i have i happened upon but that's not marvel so we'll get back josh would you buy merch from this movie uh well maybe if, if my daughter was older and yeah. she would if we would watch it with her and she liked the character i probably would um and i know they do sell stuff at like the disney stores because uh, i i was there the other day and they had like out like costume outfits and accessories and stuff but um and uh, the 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 main problem is uh, with that is that all all the Disney stores in our area are closing down, yeah. and I don't have any. Yeah, and so I, they don't sell that kind of stuff at like Target or other stuff. So I don't really see much merch other than outside of like the Disney store. I don't I know that Josh, I realized Josh they were listed. Be, Josh is gonna be Red Guardian for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta grow my beard out a little bit, and say, I don't know that I get the beard out there. I do. Maybe I do run. like that. Uh, uh, like Red Guardian and um, and Brothor and, and Peter B. Parker are start. I mean, there's the, the dad bod is coming back. The dad bod. We need some representation, right? It's finally representation it matters. Yeah, that was that was a funny scene too when he's trying to get his uh, his costume on. We all knew it was coming. Yeah, it felt very incredible. Mm-hmm. That's it. Right <laughs> exactly. Said. So let's talk about the. Um, we talked about the ending. I, I felt like. I felt like the ending was good um, with how, um, you know, he unleashes all those widows on her and she has to fight all these people that she knows are enslaved and are having to do it against their will. And so you you can see she's kind of pulling her punches and kind of waiting for the rest of the team to complete the plan and um, which is which is her mom's plan. So even though she would kind of built this empire um it, she also was the one helping take it down and um I, I thought it was all very satisfying i thought the ending was extremely satisfying and a good ending to that story and a good way to set up new characters to move forward and then we had the uh, the scene where she's she's rushing in uh her mason when that his name has uh, got her a quinjet and so she's on her way to pick up Steve and run it down to the raft. And that's when we get the after credits scene from 
uh, Civil War, or was it a before credit scene? I can't remember. But that, it was that um, was before credits. Before credits, so we get that that scene where he's busting them out, and uh, that's where this movie takes place. It takes place from the end of Civil War to that scene before the credits. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I, I thought it was great. And after that, which I thought was again part of her story, I thought it was a great part of her story because she fights to bring her. She ran away. And then she realizes my family's worth fighting for with her first family. And now she goes to save her second family. And I thought that was a great. And then, of course, when we get to Endgame, when her and Clint are there um, and, you know, they're trying to to work out who's going to sacrifice themselves. It just makes sense that she would want Clint to be able to go back to his family. Right. Because that's who she is. So great. Loved it. I love this movie. And then we get the after credit scene, which. I didn't even realize I was missing Val until the after credit scene showed her because we knew she was in this movie because it had been talked about after she shows up in the Falcon and Winter Soldier um, that she was supposed to be in this movie. So I was actually suddenly I was surprised. I was like, oh, she wasn't. I got another gnat. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that was edited out of the last episode. I guess it'll be in this one. Uh, we bought some house plants and I got that. Uh, <laughs> Natasha. Natasha. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I, I kind of feel like, um, I mean, obviously the whole pandemic um, and the delay of the film and having Val being Falcon and the Winter Soldier first kind of ruined this end credit scene a little bit because if if that was your first time seeing uh, Val and Julia Lewis Dreyfus, I mean, Twitter and everything would be blown up with uh, with Elaine's in MCU, and this is the greatest thing. And people would go see the movie more multiple times just to see that that thing, yeah. that that scene. Uh, but now that it, it was the second time, it wasn't the first time. It doesn't feel as valuable. Yeah, as the first time. And and that first time is a better introduction because she gets more screen time and she actually gets to introduce herself. So like I feel like if if I, I feel like it kind of fits. I realize a theatrical reveal is a bigger deal. But as far as you know, she just Yelena just kind of says, you know, you're not supposed to bother me on my day off, Val. And you know, they're just talking about work. They're standing over her sister's grave talking about work. And then you get the reveal that, you know, here's your next target and it's Clint Barton. Um, but and that was that was huge, and it would have been really cool when she showed up in Falcon and Winter Soldier, but she gets an actual introduction in Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I kind of feel like it works, even though I agree with you. It would have been a bigger deal had it been theatrical. Yeah, and somebody uh, – I read, I saw one video that said that – so the grave is in Ohio, what they, yeah. they, 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 they feel like that. And even in um, um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, they – I think Val mentioned about she doesn't like the Midwest and that's where she was when this end credit scene takes place where she went to the Midwest to um, to see Elena by the grave and tell her about to convince her that Hawkeye is the bad guy. And of course, this is where we're going with the Hawkeye series that will be on Disney Plus maybe by the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, Elena has been. um more than rumored i think she's confirmed to have an appearance but now it looks like it's probably a bigger deal that she's in it um and of course that movie's got um stanfield what's her first name Haley. Uh, playing kate bishop Haley. yeah so uh big fans of her and looking forward to uh her being introduced in the mcu and that's coming out soon that's the end of 2021 sometime uh so we're not too far from that uh series starting and Man, Clint Barton is a highlight of the MCU for me, so I can't wait to get more screen time. You, I didn't realize this until uh, preparing for this podcast, but I didn't. He had actually signed on for that to be a movie. There was going to be a Hawkeye movie, and uh, when uh, Disney pitched Disney Plus and how they wanted Marvel to be a big part of it, um, it was one of the first uh, projects that Feige said, you know, this would actually make a good series, and we could tell a longer form story. And he was on board. And I think it's awesome that he had the that he was on board. He probably didn't have a choice, to be honest. But all the reports say he was on board. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice these these shows we do get longer and more um, story with them. Um, 
but they they also are a little bit more feeding into the actual MCU movies rather than um, I mean anything big major happening. It seems like. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of characterization for characters I don't feel like we would get movies for. I mean, Hawkeye yeah. might be the uh, the exception there, but I don't think we ever would have gotten a Wanda movie or a Scarlet Witch movie mm-hmm. um, had WandaVision not taken place. Now that WandaVision has, I think it's possible. We, we could see that now. Uh, and we know with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we're getting a, Captain, a, a new Captain America movie, and I didn't think that would happen. So uh, it's going to be awesome. I, I think there's a lot of potential for the Disney Plus series. And whether a project's announced to be a movie, a theatrical release, or a Disney Plus series, I'm on board. I, I'd like to even see them do some uh, possible Disney Plus movies as well. I think that would be good. I, 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 I'm sure Marvel's going to be theatrical uh, when it comes to movies, but uh, lots of potential. And you know, we didn't even have time tonight to talk about Loki and where that series has gone because... That has been a huge surprise for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I thought I would not be on board with that uh, show, and and I have. Um, we had the uh, the League of Lokis uh, in the last episode, and I think that was my favorite episode so far for sure. And uh, everybody's going at, it. Everybody loves Alligator Loki. Yeah, it's a new Baby Yoda. <laughs> I'm a, I'm all in. I'm every merchandise. I'm just. Give me all the baby, uh, baby alligator Loki's. <laughs> Is it a baby alligator? I mean, it's small. No, it's an alligator, alligator Loki. <laughs> it's not very big though. Um, yeah, so uh, that's that's our reaction to Black Widow. You guys have anything else to add? All right. Well, next time that we have a Marvel talks by Duck Talks with Duck Talks. What did we name this thing? Uh, the next time we do that, we will uh, um, be talking about Iron Man, 2008 Iron Man, uh, 2008 Iron Man. We're excited about that. We've been prepared for that for a while. I'll actually have to watch the film again, I guess, uh, to be ready. But uh, that's okay because I can't tell you how many times I've watched that movie. I love it. And if you have anything you want us to talk about from that movie, be sure to message us over on Twitter. Uh, you know, res- respond in the comments on this podcast uh, or uh, drop us an email ducktalkspod at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you love to make you part of the conversation don't forget about my trivia you're going to hurt my feelings somebody just take a stab at it um, you get a car we'll like dragon rights trivia not no no prize trivia but that's a marvel thing we used right. to offer no prizes that's that's yeah go do that enough said uh <laughs> We'll have a bullpen, bullpen episode one day. But uh, yeah, that's it. I think that's it for this episode. Thank you for checking us out. We, uh, we appreciate, um, appreciate all of you. So until next time, because I don't have another sign-off. Stay marvelous. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Right, right, right. I, guess I still have to come up with mine, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still use my, my, old, my old sign-off. If you can dream it, you can do it. <laughs> and then the intro, right. intro one can be... Uh, Let's get marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> or I could say, yeah, I could say something like, uh, I, was like uh, I could say something like, "Good night, guys. We're we're burdened with glorious purpose, and we'll see you next time." <laughs> there, see <laughs> all the gems. There you go. I don't think I could ever say that. <laughs> Be like take twenty six. <laughs> You can just record it and just...